I was just thinking though, um, so you have the normalization coming from some people on the right. So an organization like Media Matters mm -hmm. uh, for America, you're the president of, now that you, you, I mean, you had a long span where Obama was president, now you have this year with uh, Trump. What has had to be? What what what's your like standard operating procedure now? Like how has things changed at the organization? So I think we haven't even had to blow it all up. Um, I mean, the core critique was okay. the same, which is that misinformation is bad, um, and the, specifically that it isn't just that misinformation is an accident. I mean, for a while and originally, and much for most of our mission, it was about that there was an intentional effort to misinform, that there was actually a concerted effort to sort of poison the mainstream media and other reporters and sort of get that out there. And at that point, it used to be just a bunch of right-wing actors, well-funded like think tanks mm -hmm. and then sort of the right-wing echo chamber. And they would bully the mainstream media into picking up their slant. Uh, that's just that the, the most part about that that's radically different now is that it's more complicated and confusing. Yeah. Um, that you have sort of like Russian active measures that are participating in to some extent. Uh, and you know, I think a lot is a lot of that story gets overblown in, in, in terms of the, when it gets reported on that they're not really getting to the real implications of it. But I think just to take a step back, because I think that'll explain how it all fits together is we did a lot of early on to look at what is the fake news problem? What do when people talk about this, what do they really mm -hmm. mean? Um, and we found that there's this framework that I think helps understand the landscape today. Which is most of that misinformation is coming from the same places, at least the ideas for it. It's these online communities like 4chan and 8chan, which are really functioning like virtual publications now. They're, mm. they're actually creating and driving a lot of what become narratives. Um, and then you sort of have this second layer of storytellers, which are largely websites that are not designed for ideological purposes, but just to get a viral traffic here or there. And then the third piece is this distribution network. And what we found is an asymmetry um, that on Facebook alone, conservative leaning, right leaning sites, uh, communities are two and a half times the size of the aggregate amount of left leaning ones. Wow. Um, it's just crazy to think about, right? I mean, we indexed all of them. And that's, that is the fundamental asymmetry alone. And what, if you think about how that fits into the sort of the fake news problem, that's how you can have a lot of this story go viral and have the saturation that it does because there is this constellation of hyper ideological communities. And then also then if you look at that framework, it doesn't just explain say where, you know, how sort of the fake news problem came in, but then you can start to see where bots and other forms of manipulation are a factor. Yeah. Um, and I think so for me, the mission is how do we monitor this in a way that isn't just chasing every fact, like, well, actually it's 10%, not 12%, but yeah. what are the core narratives that are coming out of these spaces? How do we think about how they're influencing the broader conversation? Um, and then lastly, what is the kinds of data and information that we need to give to platforms to get them to one, recognize the problem, start to put in place solutions that are not censorship driven, but rather looking at say the cheating and sort yeah. of these algorithmic manipulations. And that's really the biggest shift is actually spending a lot more time on message boards than we than say Fox News in mm -hmm. a way, mm -hmm. um, but it matters more. I mean, uh, if you go back, I cannot tell you how many times you can trace very specific Fox News segments or even Donald Trump tweets um, to a 4chan thread from two days ago. Wow. Um, I mean, he really that is- That disseminates for a couple of days and eventually hits- That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. And they're paying, I mean, Tucker Carlson's executive producers spend time in these communities. They actually solicit segment ideas from them, which is crazy to think about. I mean, they are, you know, it used to be the case that these right wing places were the vanguard, but now what they're really doing is just repackaging these stories for an audience that, that isn't yeah. using 4chan. Is, um, is, is 4chan and the Facebook community and all of these places where there's sort of a reverberation of these messages, is it more powerful than? The Fox News Channel, CNN, MS, all put together. Without a doubt. Yeah. And you can even, it is reflected in every single metric that's there. I mean, in wow. the last cycle, uh, starting in the summertime for the first time ever, the aggregate consumption of this hyper ideological and sort of the also fabricated stories exceeded the total consumption on social media from all of the mainstream sites combined. And that we had to be very generous in that analysis, include places like people. Just so that it wasn't so depressing that we all just wanted to quit. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's the landscape these days. They really are incredibly powerful forces, yeah. and and that's that's not to say they're all bad. This technology allows for an entirely different new distribution systems too, and new organizing, new outlets. So there are huge advantages, but that asymmetry uh, is a problem. And then one last piece that I think is the most startling of all is in the last cycle, those that identified as left of center did not post, almost one out of every two people that identified as left of center did not post a single thing related to politics or civic engagement on their social media feeds. That number is only 8% on the conservative side. And when you drill down wow. to find, and that, which there's a testament to when something on the left does go viral, or they do have an audience that it shows that they're overcoming not just a distribution asymmetry, but a participation 
generation gap. And mm-hmm. for me, you know, our mission now is as much about understanding what's happening in these communities and these landscapes and the structural pieces around it as it is about sounding the alarm about that one stat. Because yeah. every single assumption about getting back to power, about political organizing is based on the idea that if they just have the right message or the best digital strategy, they'll find the people. Um, and if more and more of those people that identify as left of center are tuning out, how do you get them back in? How do you market to them or target them or pull them in if they're just disengaging? Yeah. Um, because they just don't want to be abused because of the landscape. That's I would not really have there. guessed that it was that high. It's really high. It's a very scary and disturbing statistic. Wow. And um, and I think that I see that as really a big piece of our core mission is as much about understanding it uh, and what's going into these communities and how they're sort of creating not just the asymmetry between the distribution platforms, but even between participation. Hmm. Uh, and then what do we need to do to really start to to, to deal with it? Wow. Wow, that's extraordinary. Man, I, 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 I've got so many follow-ups. Get, we yeah, got other stuff we'll, to do. We'll I know, hit but them at, uh, yeah. later on. But yeah, you. I mean, the stereotype is that everybody just wants to get out, and they're you know they're 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 talking and all that. Um, but that is a that is a huge gap between progressives and non-progressives. If you like this clip of the Young Turks, you know there's a whole live two-hour show, six to eight p.m. Eastern every day, and you can download it or stream it and watch it without ads if you become a member. TYTNetwork.com/slash/join.